you know, really looking for it, there's a ton of opportunity uh, in front of you. If you if you can put it together, if you if you can figure out how to get it to to mesh and and work, you'd be surprised at what friend or cousin or neighbor or acquaintance that you can can really kind of contribute to and and bring value to, and that value then gets rewarded in so many different ways. All right, everyone, welcome to this episode of Build Stuff, Be Kind. We have Sean Holiday from the Space Station, co-founder. Uh, been two Sean's on here. Two Sean H's on here. And your business yeah. partner is a Sean as well. A Sean as well. My yeah. wife is a Shawnee. It gets real weird oh. in, the Sha- in the Sean crew. The Sean bro. universe. Dude. Yeah, the dude, Sean this, world's this, bringing this, it all together. Yeah, dude, we are the metaverse. We're the sean dude. Yeah. It's exactly. And my it. wife's actually my wife's grandma's name is Shauna, so I mean it gets it goes it goes deep, bro. <laughs> you go really deep if you want. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. Well, I'm stoked to chat. Uh, we connected, man, years ago in, in, I in met previous you. lives. Yeah. So, so I had I think we'd been DMing on Twitter. I'd saw you, you know, posting somewhere, and then I was like, "Yo, dude, I'm gonna be at the." The Gary V party, like you, you there, bro? You're like, yeah, dude, I'm here. We're bumping around and we start talking, and you're like, yeah, dude, I'm Sean from Arizona. I was like, dude, I'm Sean from Arizona. What? And then I remember you minted a quarter machine NFT right there on the spot. Right on the Everybody spot. was like, dude. partying and yelling and having fun. It was, it was a good time, man. All time, time, all time high, dude. That was, that yeah. was, uh, was that was a good time. That was a good party. Good. The, the funny thing is my. My buddy knew knows the owner of that venue and had told okay. us before the party was like officially announced that it would be. Get in. So we showed up like an out. We showed up like two minutes before Gary's crew rolled in. So like, um, oh, I can't think of his name right now. But the president of V Friends and they like roll up and they see me. They're like, yeah, Andy. Yeah, Andy. Andy and and um, Alex De Simone and Tyler yeah, and all the yeah Tyler. Guys. They're all there and they look at me. They're like. What are you doing here? Like, oh, there's a smash tournament here. We just were coming to check it out. What are you guys doing here? They're like, oh, cool. Like totally tried to like downplay it. And then like at the end of the yeah, thing, no, 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 no. yeah, uh, they come up to me like, did you knew that it was I'm like, yeah, we, we, we have that inside. Come on. Knowledge you got to have the inside sure. track. Dude. That's right. So, well, dude, uh, pumped to talk about your journey, your life, you know, uh, yeah. the things that you guys are building with, Space Station. Uh, is it the Space Station or Space Station? Either one. Either yeah, one. We, we own both. Oh, no. Yeah, the, the Space Station. Uh, Space okay, Station. break it down for me. You've got Space Station, Space Station Gaming, Space Station yep. Investments. Integrations. Integrations. So the the, the uh, influencer marketing agency, then Space Station Investments, mm-hmm. the, the kind of syndicate group. you got Space Station Animation. Animation. The, the animation piece. CPG, and then, right? Space Station CPG, yeah. Dude. Uh, I don't think there's any more like space stations, but then we have the A for Adley channel. We have the G for Gaming channel. Mm. We have the Shonduras channel, the Best Day Ever channel. And then we have all those have shorts channels. Nice. And uh, yeah, some of them like the animation channel just crossed a billion views, uh, which is wild. What? So uh, yeah, some of the shorts channels are just wild that is uh, as well. That's amazing. So, and you guys are yeah. doing a big like yeah. esports push right now, right? In Utah and Yeah, yeah. I mean it's all it's all woke back up. It was, you know, kind of over the beginning of the yeah. year and Christmas break, it's pretty pretty quiet as far as events and things. And so now we've we've really woke back up to more competitions. We just did a thing with Ken Garf here locally with like high school esports. Um so yeah, there's there's a bunch of movement kind of happening on that end, which is exciting. I love it. So you've been, uh, it's been seven years, the journey. What's like your, yeah. what's one of your favorite men- memories, uh, on the journey so far? Oh man. Buying space station.com was a super cool memory, like really? such a cool domain. And I was like, totally. that'd be so sick. And, and yeah, we hit up, it was just forwarding to this other website. And so we hit it up and we're like, Hey, you know, we want to buy it. And anyways, brokered that deal. That was super cool. Dude. Um, getting to meet just, you know, incredible people doing incredible things. Mm. That's one of the most satisfying parts of the whole journey is just like actually getting to hang out with 
even like household name type stuff. We just had Gabby with magic spoon, you know, it's like, it was uh, four or yeah. whatever times 100 most innovative things. <laughs> and it was, you know, everybody knows about it and it's in Costco. They just launched in Costco, you know, last month. And, yeah. and it's like, and, and I'm, you know, you're hanging with them. I'm, I'm, totally. You know, we hung for two days yeah. and doing sushi and, and doing our thing. And it's like, that's so rewarding to be around people that are just so innovative, willing to push the boundaries, go really, really hard. So that's been, and I could tell you a thousand stories on just that. I'm sure. Uh, but that's been very rewarding and, and have loved that. Dude, that's incredible. Well, since you're, you're a fellow Arizonan, let's, let's take it all the way back to your way roots back. in AZ. What way were you back. like as a kid yeah. growing up in Arizona? So I lived in Northeast Arizona. So, so you got, you know, Phoenix, Mesa, Gilbert, kind of that area. We were in Sholo, which is about three hours uh, from kind of the core Phoenix area. Yeah. And it's a small town at the time. It was probably 7,000 population, mm-hmm. um, one high school, one elementary <laughs> school, you know, like it, it was, it was small. And my mom, I was like, had this this like really cool you know dream you know american lifestyle dream like my mom owned a dairy queen and so i could take my friends and get you know all the burgers and everything we'd ever want soda just flowing oh yeah you know and then my dad was a pilot and so we could get my friends up in in planes and fly around it's like why this is incredible and so i yeah, just had a really fun lifestyle, you know, kid, you know, youth growing up, oh, loved yeah. dirt bikes, loved motorcycles. I'd build my own motorcycles, build my own cars, um, still have the car that I built. It was a 1923 T-Bucket. It's like a replica car. Nice. Um, don't have my motorcycles because they, they didn't survive the crashes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so they're, they're, they're all gone. Um, For sure. But yeah, I had, had a super fun, you know, and very entrepreneurial upbringing. My mom mm. owned a Dairy Queen for 34 years. My dad owned Dude. two air medical companies. So I saw, you know, them, my mom was dispatch for this air medical company that we had. So it's like two, three in the morning, I can't oh, hear wow. my mom answering a phone call, you know? And, right. and then, you know, we went through the ups and downs and just the whole process of it. So we'd be down on a Saturday morning, other kids are out riding their bikes and hanging out and we're down at the Dairy Queen, oh, yeah. you know, painting or cleaning the machines <laughs> or power washing the, the drive. And it was like getting to experience and like live through that day to day really, really helped give me this perspective. They're like, wait, I could probably do this. Or I really understand just from experience what it takes to operate something. And so, yeah, I was very fortunate to have, just the circumstance that was literally like an incubator for, for, uh, kind of entrepreneurial success or just willingness to try and kind of do something different, which then if you look at my, my family, my mom and dad, and then I have four brothers. So there's five boys total. Um, never got a girl, unfortunately, but (laughs) of those, of those brothers, my oldest brother works here at space station investments with me. My second brother, Brian, so that's Tim, my brother, Brian, uh, has a kind of fractional CMO mm. business helps nice. on the marketing side. And our brother Ken uh, is kind of business development, product development, and he's a consultant and, and has his own little firm. Nice. Then me in space station. And then our, our black sheep little brother is an oral surgeon. So you've got these four, you know, like typically the entrepreneur, like the, yeah. there's the one that's like, Oh, they're out there trying to, trying to make something happen. They're, they're yeah. grinding it out. And then you've got, you know, more other things. In this case, it's like we're the majority are, are you know, kind of out entrepreneurs doing their thing. And then our little brother is the oral surgeon. So. Dude, that's epic. My, so, yeah, that's kind of the, the upbringing. That was kind of the, the dude, setup. I love it. My, my parents owned a bakery in downtown Mesa for 15 years. So I know, I know that. Grind. Where were you? Where were you at in Mesa? We're in like, um, like Northeast Mesa. So like, uh, okay, Mountain cool. View, if you know the area and, yeah, yeah. um, yeah. and yeah. so, so I lived on Gilbert and Southern for eight years. Okay. Yeah. yeah so just right, like Gilbert, right down there Gilbert McKellips, Gil- Gilbert McKellips, Gilbert Brown area. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, yeah. I moved like 12 times growing up. We, I originally was in Phoenix and we were the, like every two years we moved basically. Um, so yeah. I, 
uh, always, always on the move. Uh, yeah. but, you know, uh, the whole Valley. Yeah. yeah. The, but they bought a, a bakery when I was in high school. And so I'd go, I'd leave school at noon at my senior year and went straight to straight to the lunch rush in downtown Mesa. And it was That's right. Mayhem. Go to work. So, but, Go to work, but man. so fun and cookies and like you said, cookies like and soda oh, always, you're always sneaking, flowing. Yeah, you're just sneaking sure. cookies and sodas to the front to the home. Uh, yeah, dude. Yeah, I got no, you. No doubt, it's free. Yeah, you know? it's free. Yeah, exactly. I'm not paying for it. My mom, is, but yeah. it, but my mom doesn't pay for it. It's free for her too somehow. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. In your mind, you're just like, just actually free. Like no one's paying for this. Yeah, it just you know? appears. And then I, you know, I'm like. My mom spent so much money on me and my friends <laughs> totally. just eating whatever we wanted. You know? Yeah, so. just an extension of the kitchen. We, you know, yeah, that food yeah, just appears good. there as well. Uh, yeah, dude, I love it. So you you move out of AZ. You move. So up. I go on my mission. I go on my okay. mission to Honduras, um, which is a critical part of the story. That's where I meet Sean, my my now co founder. Nice. But okay. we're we're in the mission in Honduras. Uh, it's a two year mission. And then when I come back, it's like, there's really nothing in Sholo. And I do some projects with my mom at Dairy Queen and whatnot, but moved to Mesa. Hmm. And the, the, the mission was like, I'm going to go back to Sholo. Like that's the dream. Yeah. And really you work at the hospital, the, the school, or you own your own business. Yeah. Well, I didn't have capital. So I wasn't going to own my own business. Um, I didn't want to work at the school. And so the option was the hospital. So hmm. I'm going to take steps towards my goal until it's obvious, right? Totally. There's this cool talk by Jeffrey Holland. He talks about wrong roads. So you go down and you hit, you hit a, a Y in the road and you go down to this one until you hit the very end where it's like, this is obviously the wrong road, right? <laughs> this was not it. You get totally. to where there's literally nowhere else to go. You yeah. turn around and now all of a sudden you're confident, you know, you're totally. at least on the right path until you maybe hit another fork. Yep. And it's like, dang, wrong road. So mm. I'm just headed down the road, which that I think is, you know, the why, and it's the yeah. one to the right. And I, I'm thinking this is it. My wife's a sonographer. So ultrasound, I'm going into nursing. Mm. There's a bilingual program. I speak Spanish. It's subsidized. Set. I'm just living great, dude. And I get in <laughs> in about a year and a half year in, I'm like, Mm-mm, it's just, this isn't me. This yeah. isn't me. I can't, I couldn't do this forever. Like no way. And so I just kind of quickly start looking for some other options and, and diversifying. And by the last year of my, of my schooling, by the, really the last six months, me and my brother uh, had been working on a startup, Tim, who, who's now with me at, at Space Station Investments. But yeah. we started a startup called Crowd Mics. That's actually where, where app that turned we your... originally met, dude. We originally Way met back. when you were doing Crowd Mics and I was doing Vici at some random... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Either in Provo or okay. might have been at South. Did you guys do South by? We did South. We did a like tiny session at South by. Yeah, yeah I think we were in that same little like little uh, session. Yeah. Session, and that's where we, I think we yeah. originally crossed paths. Anyways, yeah. was like the yeah, like the way 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 back. Yeah, yeah. So, so you were talking to your phone. It would come over the sound system. So we went out and raised capital. I finished my nursing program. I actually passed the NCLEX this test to get certified, and then immediately went full-time into, into crowd mics. We raised, uh, some capital, um, totally different landscape. This is 2013 mm. way different landscape in that. Like we're doing a lot of angel pitches, yep. still very much kind of like there'd yep. be like angel dinners. Totally. And so we would just start literally <laughs> Northern California all the way down. And we did, you know, 15 dinners, which was validating that they at least wanted us to yeah. come to the dinners totally. and then you'd be in front of 30, 40 people, sometimes more and you know, no commitments or no interest. Yeah. And you're like, that sucks. So we finally raised enough capital. We go to work there. That is literally my education. That is where I learned how to build a brand. That's where I learned, you know, how to get in front of people, which was the yeah. first step, then how to build a relationship to keep them engaged and, and nurture that over time. And, you know, that was really my like first step into to having to figure out, a lot of aspects of, totally. of just business and, and community building and whatever you want to call it. And so that was, that was an incredible experience. We then sold that in 2016. And at the time we like, we were event tech of the year and nice. you know, we were winning, we're in, you know, entrepreneur magazine and all these different things. And Sean, my mission buddy, he's seen some of that. And then I'm watching American Idol 
and he pops up on, on there as like the guest celebrity or star or whatever. And I'm like, what the <laughs> freak? That's like my buddy from That's my crazy. mission. Like yeah. how weird. Yeah. And so, and so I'm like, huh? So I text him like, were you just on American Idol, dude? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, that is incredible. Like, congrats. He's like, yeah, yeah. What are you doing? And so we start talking and, and got to this point where I was like, look, you should come up to Utah, see what I'm working on, building the Sean Duras brand. This is going to be huge. Come, come help, mm. you know, operate and, yeah. and, and be a part of this thing. And I was like, you know what? That's, that is sick. So I flew up here. It was like November of 16 and I fell in love with the business, wanted to change, you know, from kind of tech and yeah. was ready to move out of Arizona and, and it was time. So moved up here and now have created the after space station. It's been this just whirlwind, yeah. you know, from really December of 2016 is, is when we came to the business focused on the Shonduras brand. We're scaling more collaborations. We were video, we were doing a video every single day and we just were getting access to deals that we would do the deal and have either exclusivity mm. or the deal wouldn't maybe work. Yeah. And we would take that and, and, you know, hit up other people and say, Hey, totally. does this work for you? Or does this yeah. make sense for you? Or, mm. you know, they're different size and opportunity yeah, yeah. levels and, and people started taking them. And so we did that. Up. We did that a few times before we were like, let's really make this and formalize this. Yeah. And so we sat down, we whiteboarded a bunch of ideas and a bunch of things and services maybe we could provide or ways that we could bring value to the market. And yeah. two of those that stuck were this influencer marketing agency, which mm -hmm. is now Space Station Integrations, and then Space Station Gaming. And this was pre-Fortnite, pre-Ninja, pre-any yeah. big, big movement yeah. that you saw. And... And so we dove in with those two, you know, thinking one of the two would, would probably work. Totally. And, and yeah, started just marching towards that and did that solely like really, really focused for a couple years. It was like 2017 to 2019. Um, and Sean was doing the, the best day ever. So the Sean Durst mm -hmm. channel, he was doing A for Adley. And it wasn't until we you know, got our building and put a slide in, a pickleball court, a hot tub, you know, mm -hmm. having, having just this just a lot of fun. Totally. And in 2019, Sean had been posting a ton on like the best day ever about cereal. He would always eat cereal, mm -hmm. just talk about it. It was natural. Yeah. And a friend of ours calls and is like, Hey, there's this company called magic spoon that's raising money. And you guys could bring a ton of strategic value with your influence, totally. you know, your connections, but also like, we just, I know you guys love cereal. His name was Chris Bennett. Mm -hmm. He owned a company called 97th floor. And so we're like, yeah, we do love cereal. That'd be sick. And we've never made an investment for us. So yeah. We know we want to invest. Totally. So we invest, does phenomenally well. The next year we're like, okay, we should, we should probably do this again. They called yeah. me, you know, do you want to follow on? So we followed on the round. And in this one, we asked Gabby, the, the Gabby and Greg, the co-founders. And we're like, Hey, could we syndicate the deal? Mm. So could we get other, maybe some influencers, totally. you know, some, some other friends to throw in and, and they're like, yeah, to their credit. They're like, yeah, go for it. Like, that'd be cool. And so we went and syndicated this deal. It came together in a couple of days. Incredible people, incredible response. It was super fun. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. And so we're like, we should do this way more. And so yeah. fast forward to today, we've done 97 um, deals, wow. 97 investments, like portfolio companies. Yeah. Done more, like 100 and something deals, but yeah, yeah. 97 portfolio companies across you know, better for you food and, um, you know, like aura ring health tech and nice. levels health and, uh, a couple of those and, you know, just kept growing. The portfolio kept growing and access yeah. was incredible. Um, we built out an offering called space station CPG where we were going to help these mm. investments at a very core value of like, we're yeah. going to be value add so much so that we, we, put together this group uh, where they would help broker deals and, and get nice. their products on shelves. Yeah. And so um, that's been building and growing. And then we saw an opportunity uh, to, to get really heavily involved in a business called nodal power, where we take landfill gas, convert that to energy and then mine Bitcoin. And so came in, raised capital for that business. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been, been growing and doing really, really well. And so, uh, and then we started the animation studio. So we were taking Sean had thousands of videos, like 2000 videos on the yeah. internet. And we thought, how could we reimagine those? And so we took an, an original audio storyline yeah. uh, and just 
bolted on and built it in uh, Unreal Engine 5 to where we were able to use these models, use these, these pieces. And, and the cool part was we were using the audio from videos that already had incredible validation on the internet and, totally. and the fans and, and the community already loved. So, yeah. so that's just how it, how it goes. It's not yeah. like every time you sit down, it's this perfect thing or this perfect no, offering. Sure. Like animation was built off of the, the validation of the channels we already have and using the assets you know, and reimagining what we already had. Investments was a byproduct of a connection, mm -hmm. you know, that, that turned into, you know, this bigger syndicate group and, yeah. you know, and it's like nodal was within the syndicate Compound group, but up. then kind of pulled out because it was, you know, op, you know, advantageous enough that we wanted to spend more time on it. So it, it kind of compounds it, it compounds. Yeah. And, and if you're, you know, really looking for it. There's a ton of opportunity uh, in front of you. If you, if you can put it together, if you, yeah. if you can figure out how to get it to, to mesh and, and work, you'd be yeah, surprised yeah. at what friend or cousin or neighbor <clears throat> or acquaintance that you can, totally. can really kind of contribute to and, yeah. and bring value to. And that value then gets rewarded in so many different ways. Yeah, dude. I love that. That's amazing. Uh, when you, when you decided to go into the partnership in 2017, obviously, you know, Sean yeah. had already had some, some success. You'd had some success He'd, on American Idol having these things. Um, yeah. But I, I've seen, you know, the two of you and your relationship, at least from afar and in, in, in events. And um, was there something about him as a person that, that, and the two of you, like a connection or, Something that really made you say, yeah, like I'm going to partner with this dude and, and these are the things we're going to create. Like was there. If yeah, what's wild is it felt just so natural mm -hmm. and there wasn't, you know, it was a true partnership in that like, okay, we're starting from not even knowing what the future holds. Yeah. Like the, the trust is there. The friendship is there, you know, the, the, experience we had been in a similar situation in Honduras. We were we were never actually like companions or spent yeah. a ton of time, but we had spent time together. Totally. And and just also had something that was relatable and mm. and had kind of helped shape us in in these critical years of our life. And so that is a baseline. And then just the literal abyss ahead, meaning we don't know how it's mm -hmm. going to exactly shape up or how exactly it's going to go, or we don't have the a crystal ball to say, this is what, what's going to be, you know, what it's going to look like. You know, that was what was, I think, special or unique into that situation. Since yeah. have done joint ventures, not necessarily mm -hmm. partnerships where you, you, you have a little bit more context of you're going to bring this value. I'm going to do this thing. You're yeah, yeah. for this, you're going to get rewarded that. Totally. Um, those, those just first days were, you know, in a crappy insurance building <laughs> off Antelope out Drive, just, just sending it as hard as we could and trying yeah. all kinds of different things, um, really not knowing, you know, where it was going to go. So Dude, I, I, I don't know. I don't know that I, yeah, I don't, I don't know that there's like some yeah, but I think that, moment I was like, wait, that energy, it's going to go. Vibe. It was just this core energy and value and like, yeah. We've been through some similar situations and things we very much saw and wanted to, you know, be kind and, and contribute mm -hmm. back to things and build community. And, and so those were just baseline. You kind of, you know, kind you of get natural. that out of somebody pretty quickly. Just any, any, any interaction or relationship, you can start to realize and see where, you know, where people want to be or where they're headed and just felt like, felt like a really great place to, to go together. That's amazing. Uh, how many employees, like how, how big is your team now? About a hundred now Dude. across those seven or eight kind of, you know, groups or communities. Um, yeah. so yeah, that's, it's, and we're three, four buildings now. So Dude, that's, and your buildings. Freaking. Yeah. So they're do fun. You, they're do really you cool. like, how have you gone about, cause I've met a number of people on your team all, really solid, you know, yeah. uh, skill level, but also just good, good people. Like really, you know, yeah. it feels like they really embody the presence and, and like the values that you and Sean have and, and the way that you lead. Is that something that like 
deliberately you go into as you're hiring, like finding culture Tons. fit or how have you, how have you managed to yeah. build a team that's so aligned? Yeah. Ton, tons of, of it is overlapped. So mm. a lot of it is people we knew. A lot of it is, you know, intros from other people that we, we knew and trusted. And so yeah. we didn't see, you, you don't, you know, we didn't start from just, if you really look at any core real story, it very rarely starts from like, it's like I met this guy or it was this like some D it's like a college roommate, a neighborhood mm. friend, a guy that lives in my neighborhood, a, my brother's sister-in-law or something, you know, whatever, like so, it, it, somehow you're, there's like almost every single time, some way that started. And, mm. and even if it started at, we met at a coffee shop, dude. And yeah. we met at an event during crowd mics. It's, it still takes a lot to like nurture it into something. So it's typically, I've known this guy for years. Yeah. Right. And so, so many of the connections are the first, you know, groups are just that family, friends, yeah. high school friend, friend of a friend intro from somebody you trust, you respect. Um, you know, that's, it's typically how, how it gets going. So they already knew yeah. us. Totally. And kind of knew how and what we wanted and who, what our values were and, and what we were trying to do. Then it was, can I get, you know, can I get my head wrapped around what's the task at hand, what the market, you know, demand is. And can I, you know, fit into that, that vision or that direction, you know, and, and that's, that's the step that's always changing and evolving. Yeah. The market's changed 2020. No one was expecting 2021, this crypto summer, you know, couldn't totally. have anticipated. I, I don't, none of us know what 25 or six or seven are going to totally. be. Is it going to be some big pinnacle COVID or market crash or the best years of or aliens coming down on earth? Place. I no, no, We got to all jump on the so, space station, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like you, you, you've got to have just that, that, that true belief or just that core understanding and feeling. And then as the, as everything else comes and changes and directions happen, you, you, you know, you evolve yeah. and mold with it. Is that something you feel you can quantify that? Because my question leads in my next question of like, you, you have all these things, like you, you keep expanding and, and, and effectively expanding. A lot of people try Sure. Uh, you know, different things. And it's like a distraction from yeah. their core business, but it seems like you guys have really kind of built things that really plug and play with each other uh, in a meaningful way. Is like, is there something like what's driving that in you and your team and like wanting to do more and wanting to grow the thing? Kind of, yeah. A lot of it's opportunistic. Like I said, the CPG was mm. heavily because we were trying to learn to be good at, you know, to, to be good value add investors. Yeah. And so we wanted to learn enough that we brought some, some individuals in and said, Hey, what's velocity and what's in cap. And yeah. you know, how does, how do these distributed, you know, groups work? And yeah. I'm just trying to learn, learn and ask a bunch of questions. And, and then it just becomes obvious enough that it's like, we should probably have this as some kind of service or there's enough demand yeah. around us totally. that we could probably optimize this animation same thing it's like we got a lot of content already how could we use this you know and and relive this same effort we've already put in and let the asset grow again you know investments we didn't set out as like a firm we weren't yeah. raising a fund <laughs> totally we just we were investing and we thought if we're investing why not allow people to invest with us yeah. you know now we're like six 650 members in our syndicate it just grows fast when it's intentional yeah. and when it's, when it's real, Yeah. because if, you know, it's not to say we couldn't have set out and done a, a more formal fund or something. Yeah. It was just that we, you know, we were doing it for ourselves. The, yeah. the intention was this, and then it opportunistically built and grew around it. And so I think that that was important to the growth of, of in the direction we're in and we're in, these different verticals, yeah. gaming, investing, creator economy, you know, landfill, gas, Bitcoin mining, <laughs> like they, totally. they, we, you know, we're in several different kind of categories or markets yeah. and they do overlap a lot, right? They do, they, there is a ton of crossover and it makes 
makes a ton of sense. Yeah. Um, but they were all, they were all from an opportunistic standpoint. Yeah. Even from go back when I was talking about Sean to the agency, it was because there was enough market demand that it was totally. just taking and steering the opportunity into places that became so obvious yeah. that they needed more team. And then they became so obvious that they needed, you know, certain structure and certain yeah. things that then, then drive to these, these outcomes. Yeah. So, Seems like so, very... so you know, if you're listening, it's like, I want to do this thing or I want to do that thing. It's like, get enough market demand that that thing turns into your full time, yeah. whatever, or that thing turns into, you know, really great. I've, you've seen it from little products. Mm. Any, it could be anything, right? A product that it's like, I just put it out there and make it in our basement or in our garage. And all of a sudden it's, you know, doing all these crazy units. It's like, cause the market wanted it, that, that yeah. there was enough demand in the market to want your thing. Totally. It's when people go out with their own vision desires. I've always wanted to make a water bottle. So like, I'm going to make this water bottle totally. and, and the world's going to want it. Cause I want it. And it's mm -hmm. like the market's the market, man. And, so yeah. I think That's, if you're listening, it's like, where's their gaps or opportunities yeah. in the market and, and solve for them. So we just kept kind of naturally letting it steer us into gaps that we would fill yeah that, that's that's interesting that you say it that way because i was gonna ask a question about the role that like intuition because it feels like this equal part of like intuition but a lot of like um like filling a demand and and driving towards like where the opportunity presented itself which is not, not really the opposite of intuition, but it's like, it's they're little, close. They're closer than you yeah, think. Totally. Like, yeah. Like information precedes inspiration or yeah. intuition. Like you, you've got to have enough information because you think intuitively you're saying, I, I man, that, there's that gap. There's that thing. It's because you've gotten so much time mm whether you're consuming it, whether you're living in it, there's been incredible entrepreneurs or inventors or whatever that worked as doctors for 40 years yeah. and then came up with the cap that goes over the IV because right. they lived in the environment so long that it's like, I'm seeing people get sick from this thing or whatever it is yeah. that it's, they've evolved into mm -hmm. better manufacturing, better product market fit, whatever that might be. And so it's you, you think it's like, Oh, I just, hmm, I just, this, this is going to work. I just mm. know it's like, that's coming off of information you have because you've either been living in it, you've been studying it, you've been prompting and asking and really trying to, to figure it out. Crowd mics came, we were sitting in church, me and my brother. And it came to me that there was a lady, you know, someone's got to run that mic couple around rows that. over and I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> hear her. They didn't even have a mic to run around. I couldn't hear her. Oh yeah. And she's emotional and she's sharing some really powerful story to her or something that was really impactful and meaningful. And I was like, I want to hear that. You know, I do. Totally. And I can't. And yeah. so I just leaned over to my brother and I was like, what if you could talk into your phone and have it come over the sound system? He's like, yeah, that's brilliant. That'd be dope. And I'm like, it would, that was it. That that's what started then hundreds of hours literally of research and yeah. of studying and of asking questions we asked every professor we could get our hands on every public speaker yeah. every event coast you know host mm -hmm. whatever to try to see and all of them were like that's brilliant that would be incredible oh. Oh, i would totally use that that would make sense now could we overcome the tech could we overcome mm -hmm. you know all these other factors but with the information we we checked against and we're like okay yeah. This, this, the investment stuff, when we started investing, it, it wasn't like, okay, we're, this is going to work because we want to invest. It's like, totally. do other people want to invest in things we want to invest in? You know, and, and it wasn't until we just started saying, Hey, literally just raise the flag. And yeah. say, we're going to invest in this thing if anybody wants in. And then all of a sudden it was like, me, 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 yeah. me. And you're like, Whoa, totally. there's obviously enough interest in this. And that's what Kickstarters help yep. to and other things where it's like, it's kind of a soft, like, is this, is there a demand yeah. in the market? Cause I, I don't know how else to validate my intuitions telling me there is, yeah. but I want to validate it. Kickstarter's done billions yeah. and billions and billions of dollars raised for people because it's literally this, like, is there demand? And then when it, so, when it hits, it's like, it just Oh, there is. And then, well, you go. and I think you guys have like set yourself up for so much data with all the content and 
and that world yep. that like brings back and the influencers you work with and that data set. Like, so it like just kind of it's, connecting it's the dots really, now. It's Sean, like, it's these, yeah, it's, it's these community driven. Yeah. So we've done like 15 billion views on, on YouTube. So we've done, yeah. yeah, we've done, you know, 97 investments. We've done like $80 million yeah. in, in influencer marketing deals. We've won a world championship and, you know, done all kinds of things within the different gaming communities, Halo and Rocket League and Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah. And, and when you're in the community, mm. there's community members, there's people right now that are, that are obsessed with Halo that you otherwise wouldn't have thought maybe were, were, were as obsessed. Yeah. You'll have on the creator side, you'll have a creator where, you know, there'll be somebody in the community that has access to something that you really want or need or brings a ton of value to, to whatever things at hand that, that they're there for this reason. And then it's like, Oh, you also have that house sick. And and then you can run with that. And so it's, as you build these communities, mm -hmm. the opportunity and the access you need just starts to become more, we're all, we're, we're a part of this and there's a reason we're in this and we want to do this totally. more than I'm trying to just have to go find it one for one. And so it's, it's about having and creating a place where people want to collaborate or want to help or want to, to, you know, be involved that, that really creates a, a bigger impact and just more access. So it's like, Oh dude, totally. we're both like this thing. What about this? Or, Hey, I know I'm not, afraid. I'm never afraid. Like I'll see you're connected to somebody. Hey, the other day you were connected totally. to somebody and I was like, yo dude, yeah. C can, could you plug me in? And it's like, that could be your best friend or that could be someone you don't even know. And you're just connected on LinkedIn. Totally. I don't know. Until yeah. I ask <laughs> you made the text intro yeah. and I'm off to the races. So it's like, totally. that's how it compounds and goes quicker yeah. and really scales. If you looked at, at even from like a, uh, like PayPal mafia, right? Mm, it's like, yeah. There was a core friendship or connection or value yeah. enough that as they went to do other ventures, they would call each other and yeah. say, Hey, could you help me this? Could you validate this? Could you totally. be my first user here? Could you fund this? Could you, whatever the scenario oh, is, 100%. it's like, think of that. Just what's the community or the connections you have with whatever you're doing. And then it, it, it will compound and it will help catalyze the next venture opportunity access whatever thing you know whatever yeah, thing you need whatever yeah, thing relationships you are are just such a uh, an important and not necessarily overlooked but i think like people it's like it's all about value in my mind like how can you provide value so that when that opportunity yep. or that need or that like there's that banking of providing value we don't put enough yeah we don't put enough goodwill on things yeah like we we want results Right. We, totally. we want to know if we do something, we get yep. some return. I, I hooked you up with it. I get this. I gave you access here. You're going to give me access there. And, and I think it's when you build goodwill, mm. it's, it's so much easier for whatever. And whenever you need, I, I just literally had a guy text me that I haven't texted in five years. Text. I hit him with a, with an ask like, Hey, yeah. I'm looking to put this thing together. Do, do you know anyone? Yeah. Not him. I'm not trying to get, I don't even think totally. he could actually help me with what I need, but it's like, is there anyone you can think of yeah. that might be, be helpful? He comes back and, and it's like, no, there's not, I, I yeah. don't really have any connections or access to the thing you're trying to do, but it was good to hear you. Hey, I have this buddy who needs it. And it, and it, totally. just, it starts to, yeah. it starts to move and it starts to flow. And so you got to have enough goodwill hmm. that you can make the phone calls in that, but you also have to be willing when they hit you and someone yeah. hits you and says, Hey, do you know, you know, Sean, totally. or do you know whatever person that you're like, I do, yeah, I do. And I can make that connection and, and, and help. So people get that confused with networkers. Yeah. You're a master networker. You're a master connector. No, I s want to spend the time to have the access. It's not, it's not just about how big my Rolodex or my phone totally. is. Yeah. If I can't do anything or make a call with those, I've, yeah. I've got to be able you to have a relationship, have meaningful, meaningful relationships to make a real call Yeah. to, to get the needle to move and whatever that needle might be. I've used it for my kids. Hey, courtside seats at the jazz totally. or something like not, not nothing to do with a transaction dollars. Yeah, yeah. It's, 
everything to do with an experience, yeah. everything to do with my kids wanted to ride a helicopter. I had a friend who had a helicopter and it was this, you know, super, super cool thing. That goodwill was put up by so much other things. And the result, the outcome from it was, you know, was this experience. Yeah. It wasn't money or wasn't equity or advisory shares or any of that stuff. It was, yeah. it was experience in that, in that scenario. So. Dude, I love that. Um, Sorry, my computer was dying. Um, no, you're good. Uh, touched on community. I'm a. I mean, we built Keep Nature Wild really on the back of community. Like that. Like community. every decision yep. we made was like, how is this going to provide value to the community, and that will then compound our sales, our growth, our impact, all of that. What What have you seen on the brand side? Um, how can a brand effectively build community or what have you seen brands success? Cause there's a, it's kind of a buzzword now. Yeah. Everyone's like, Oh, we got to build community. And, sure, sure. And most people are just saying we need more audience and more sales, but like true community is what you yeah, just yeah. described and exchange of value and connection and relationship. Um, how have you yeah. seen brands like really effectively invest in and build community? It's yeah, it's really tough from, it always turns back to, okay, but what's the ROI, right? What, what's the sale? What's the, you know, the dollar thing? I think at a high level, some brands that have, have truly executed against that are like a Tesla, right? Yep. They, 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 they were many years with no vehicles, yet building this incredible community off yep. of the contribution of everyone's knowledge, the, mm. the effort to get to something. And I think in some ways that was – what made them such a strong community was that there wasn't just an exchange of you give me this, I'll give you that. It's like, we're hoping to get to this place. And I think if you've looked at like pebble watch way back in the day, Mm. um, nomadic who I'm like way closer with was the community built around nothing, meaning no product exchange or value. The hope that there was going to be a product to exchange and value to be brought. Yeah. So you're building on the core core, like efforts of aspiring to get to something. So then it feels more community centric. Can we get to this thing together? Can we actually pull this off? Is this possible? If we got to this, imagine what it would do for all of us. Like that, that is, is the kind of most pure piece of it. Then it's way harder long tail to keep, the messaging to keep the feeling, the sentiment that it really is value add. And it it really is about, you know, everyone coming together that that's tough Mm. because for every community, we're doing this for, for the greater whole, we're asking you what color you want in the product. Do you like chocolate or in mint or fudge to then the five probably, buy this, sell this, totally. here's the value, here's the product, here's the thing. It's, it's, it's really tough. I think it's probably been more of those that can, can like get themselves deep into the vertical. So if you're a running company, yeah. hookah or whatever their name is, yeah, they're like so associated with runners and yeah. running that the brand blends into the category. Like it yeah. blends into running 100%. and it's like, Oh wow, we're I'm in I'm in in running, right? Yeah. Like it's it's so synonymous with that. Mm. And so the community is because they're putting on events and they're have the top athletes talking about stretching and talking about yeah. food and diet and all these things that bleeds into what you love. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, I didn't even realize that they only do shoes. That's crazy. Totally. I literally thought they were they were running. When yeah. I think of totally that shit. And I'm not a runner at all. No, oh, yeah. When I see that and I see the people, how they treat it and how they inter- oh, yeah. engage with it. It's like, they're running, they're not shoes. Yeah. So no, I, it's hard to, you know, it's a very small niche category. That's like ultra runners or whatever, but it's like, they, they've done a great job of yeah. creating enough, you know, conversation yeah. that it's not around shoes. It's around everything so else. Shoes is just one of the, the deliveries. Yeah. I, to, like have this diagram that I've been working on if this idea of like the value pyramid. And it's like every successful brand 
has like their core value, the first tier value, which is like the product or service that you're selling. Second yep. tier is like the education, the experience, the, the, the things that you're creating on top of that, you know, the, the content you're putting out on social, the, yep. the value you're, you're kind of pushing out to the market. That third tier value and where community in my mind really exists is in that shared uh, belief. Like we are runners. I am like a runner and the value you start to create between each other. If a brand can create value yep. to someone that then that brand or that person then provides value to other customers and now they're exchanging value back and forth. Like that to me is where value really compounds and where community can really thrive because now you and I are exchanging value because the brand yep. connected us together. And that's, that's, like real, like pure community. That's like real, real community. You can look at, we're probably both a part of the liquid death community. Yeah, totally. Like yeah. People like it. Yep. We like their content. Totally. We like what they do, but it wouldn't bring us together. Yeah. I, I would never say like, we went to a liquid death thing or yeah. I saw you drinking one. I'm like, Oh dude, my man, like what's up liquid death guy. It's like, totally. not necessarily. Mm. I think it's, it brings, you know, it brings together yeah. an experience, an event, a, a, a situation. And yeah. that's at its core running, you know, others things, you know, there are still brands that, that the community is there and they laugh with you. They like you, totally. they, they enjoy, you know, your company, yeah. but you're not necessarily transacting with each other. Yeah. Shoe hookah or hoka, whatever it's called. They're like, you get to a transaction level where you're like, uh, I could do anything for this community. I could throw an totally. event. I could, we're going to hang, we're going to talk yeah. your tech. You're going to be texting each other. If yeah. you see each other, have those shoot. You're like, Hey, totally. you both got these, let's go. Yeah. But, but, but maybe not the same as you would, uh, you know, on liquid death. We see that in, you know, the investing piece. Yeah. The, the amount of deal flow that people will send us and the, and the, you know, access and can I get my friend in and, mm. and whatever is is so tangible when we brought him here to our event you yeah. know and physically had people here at the office it was so easy to communicate and it was so easy for them to talk because there's this mutual you know great place where they've you know interacted or have yeah. similarities you know the brand space station investments provided the outcome yep. of their invested dollars growing but the community brought all aspects of that totally. together. And so I think if you're conscious of what you're trying to do or trying to build, uh, you know, that's, that's how or what you're going to do. Again, yeah. you can have a bunch of people that laugh with you, joke with you, and that's great. And, and it's been very lucrative for Liquid Death, but I wouldn't put them at the same community level necessarily yeah. as, as like our investment fund or Sean and his, and his YouTube channel, like totally. we'll throw community events. We'll bring them yeah. together. We'll ask for their input. We'll give them a voice. And, and there's so many ways when I say transact, I don't mean dollars no, yeah. and like money and like ways to yeah. transact value, to give totally. and, and be helpful and thoughtful and no, you know, 100%. all that stuff. So I love that. Um, and I think too, like you don't even know, all the people that are friends or connected or the value from the event that you just hosted, like how many people met there and are now two weeks huh. later already like making stuff happen or how many people follow, you know, Sean's YouTube channel and, and comment back and forth and now connect and like, oh, like go to bid yep. summit or go to, you know, some of these events and like yeah. Yeah. connect with, and now they've formed lifetime friendships because of the brand, which is, which is incredible. And then it all, it, 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 it if you can, if you can maintain the community, if you can, can continue yeah. to add the value and contribute, you're just compounding in that the friend that they met now adds another friend and adds another friend and adds another, and, and it, and it just starts to, to get bigger, but smaller, yep. it's bigger in size, maybe totally. numbers. It's smaller in, in fee, like connection. attention and access and connection. You totally. know, it's like, there's your ROI on that, community right there. That's it. Yeah. It's like, that's the true trigger that you're like, wow, this is, this is moving. This is, you know, this is working and it takes way longer than you think. You know, yeah. everybody wants oh, totally. some overnight thing that's no. so quick and I can make this phone call to this person and I could do this to that. And we can, it is yep. just so, so, so long yep. that you have to be 
you know, really engaged in it. Yeah. And I think a lot of people feel like, or think they look at, you know, Sean Duris and think, Oh, I got to have millions of followers to build sure. community. When, when in reality you could, you could build like how much community did your mom's dairy queen build in Sholo, Arizona of a population yeah. of 7,000? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's best friends because of that spot, right? Like it's oh, for sure. thousand percent still talk about it today. Totally. Um, and so it's like, yeah. I know that with Dairy Queen. I, we used to go up to Eager all the time and yeah. stop at that Dairy Queen all the time. Yeah. So it's like, I think that's where people get hung up a little bit is like, oh, it needs to be massive to be meaningful or impactful. Yeah. And it's like really no aligning way. around the value you're trying to create. No way. Yeah, it's, it's completely about, and knowing what you want that value to be and being hyper, hyper intentional about that. Totally. You know, I think- wanting one thing and doing one input and wanting a different output is, is as humans and just constantly having to check against or trying to solve for figure out yeah. is like, what, 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 what real inputs and things are we doing to, to, and expected outcomes? We always just expect or want them to be so much bigger and oh, more and immediate you know, than we ever thought. Or, or you look at, I looked the other day at, at some brand and I was like, dang, they were launching a new product. And I was like, hey, look at them. That's sick. I dug in. It's like, 15 years in the making 15 years they've been grinding this business and they're launching this really cool thing and you're yeah. like whoa 15 years totally it's like too often we think it was you know you, you, like, you think tesla was like the other day you're like oh man i remember like yeah 2015 maybe teslas were starting to pop around it's like they've been grinding on tesla bro 2001 i don't even know totally forever right. you know it's like it's way, way, way longer than you think. Hundred percent. And it's, you know, kind of start founded in two thousand three, Tesla. Yeah. So, so ten years before you even heard about them in twenty thirteen, ten more years before they're prolific and actually totally usable, and they're not even close to having the, the numbers and the and the reach that that it really can be. So ten yeah. years before you saw in meaningful impact yeah. from a Tesla, I mean, you could probably do the same with any brand you love or, or oh, wanted to look at totally. it. Yeah. We, we love the overnight success narrative when rarely is that in actuality, what has happened. <laughs> yeah. 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 Very, not, never almost. Yeah. yeah. Literally. Um, dude, uh, this has been incredible. We, we have one question of the final question we ask every guest on our show. What role has kindness played in building your success? probably the core the most core actual real piece like if you don't value that or don't see the return of that then then you've really got to check check some things kindness you have you know love gary v big mm -hmm. big uh you know had been uh, fortunately had to have been on podcast and had him yeah. speak at our events and things and he always preached and it was always just a great reminder that kindness is you know lead with kindness and kindness kills so many things you know bad scenarios and environments and tough situations and so can't tell you enough how many spots i've been in that just by simply being kind has gone so so far also you never ever ever know ever know who's sitting by you on a plane who's you're you know Etch so next true. door, Nate, whatever the scenario is, person you meet at the coffee shop, yeah. that by being kind, they could either be having a terrible day, they could be the next perfect thing you need for your career to grow, they could be just inspirational and change and move you. Like, if you're not kind and if you don't lead with, with that type of attitude, you'll never even get to a place where you can try. And that was honest truth, not like. That your podcast and this whole thing. That is how we connected and bonded in a real true place was you just actually being a kind, genuine, I want to say genuine in just the, like, there's no perceived, I'm trying to get this from you and, then, and you know, using anything. It was just genuine, real homies. And totally. that's when you get a call that's like, Hey, do you want to be on the podcast or Hey, participate in this event or can you make this intro? It's like, of course. Yeah. Okay. It's not even hard to say yes. It's, <laughs> it's, it feels right to say yes. And so 
appreciate that it's coming from, I was, I was like to have like, you know, a Gary V or a Hormozy or some of these guys, I was actually just talking about it with a friend right yeah. before this. That's why I was late was, you know, like a Simon Sinek will, will inspire me and yeah. I'll hear something and I'm like, ah, oh, yes. But Simon doesn't really have that authority. Like mm. he, he's a great writer and he's a great, like motivational yeah. thinker. He's a great thinker. When Hormozy or Gary V or Elon Musk or some of these, there's a there's a certain like authority that's like mm. they've done it, they've been through it, yeah. They've 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 they felt it. Just sharing that the kindness mm. comes from an authority with you and a feeling, yeah. having experienced, having been your friend, and so really. appreciate that uh, that that's the title, the name, the the whole thing that it comes from a a real place, not a like. Let's talk about build stuff. Maybe not so much the kind stuff. It's like, yeah. uh, I love that, that you can speak to it from a, a, a place of authority. Dude. So. Oh, wow. That, thank you uh, for that. I appreciate. I mean that. Um, yeah. yeah. Really uh, hits me to the core and, and um, you're a, a homie for life for sure. And appreciate you coming on and, and sharing this time. And, and I'm, I know a lot of people will get value out of just your journey and your approach. And you can feel it, all the things that you talked about so much I've seen and felt. And even from a distance, like following you guys before I even knew you through your yeah, first yeah. warehouse, at the space station and then space station 2.0. And I like, I, I've been yeah. fo like following you yeah. cause I just love <laughs> the yeah. energy, the vibe. Like I just, and then, we yeah, you know, yeah. finally had an opportunity to meet and it's just like, dude, we're just, we're just on that same frequency, that same wavelength and, and a thousand percent. And, and, that, and, and it's, yeah. it's easy. That's the nice part. Yeah. It's easy, man. It's It's, it just makes sense. It's genuine. You know, you always yeah. talk about genuine. It's one of those words yeah, yeah. that's used so much. It's just a genuine, like, Oh, this guy's a homie. This, this I'll go to, I'll go to, you know, to battle and, and make it happen. And so, Bro. I appreciate you having me on, dude. And and yeah, yeah, if I can be helpful to anyone listening and and yeah. you know, reach out, DM me on LinkedIn. Happy to try to be, you know, helpful and contribute. So awesome. We'll we'll put your uh LinkedIn bio in, in the YouTube and, and so. put it out there as well. Uh thank you again. Thank you everyone for tuning in thank to you. this episode of Build Stuff Be Kind. We'll catch you next time. Thank you. Bye.